All right, so new baby, newborn. And this whole time has been an adjustment, an adjustment for me, my family, my, my, my parents, you know. I can't really control everything day to day. And this is really his space. We're always in the living room. It's often a mess and we're cleaning like every day or every other day. So what I was thinking is, why don't I just take control of the areas that I can control, which is the kitchen. He's not really in the kitchen. He's never really in the kitchen unless he's in there with us. That's not his space. And that's my space to cook, to create, to get artsy and do my thing. So why not just organize the kitchen so it can give me some peace of mind and feel like I have some type of control. My life is not spinning out of control, you know, because it's not. Yeah, because it's not. <laughs> so we are going to organize this kitchen, at least put a plan together on what we want it to look like. But first, I gotta make a drink. kitchen what am I going to do here so this little nook I want to make a few changes not big because I don't want to um, crowd the counter I just want to get a couple of things to just kind of liven up this kitchen right this is not our forever home but while we're here why not make it beautiful right as much as we can so this is the plan that I have for this kitchen I want to get a trevet or trevet I'm not sure how you say it and add put my salt my sugar and also get a olive oil decanter they are very basic but i'm on the hunt for a really beautiful one because i'm in a journey or in the in, in the place in my life where i'm just like if i'm not in love with it i don't want it right so that's that's kind of where i am with it so i don't want to get the simple clay glass one. i want to get something really unique and beautiful and i also want a brass pepper mill the one i saw was very expensive like a hundred and change we're not doing that no it's not happening that was sitting in front of because i love this wood that's going on over here and just to have that wood as well to put on, it's just, it's gonna be gorgeous, right? So that will go over there. On this side, you see a lot of baby stuff and I wanna get a lamp. For some reason, lamps in the kitchen is very cute. Um, It doesn't make any sense. Like why is there a lamp in your kitchen? It doesn't make any sense, but aesthetically it is gorgeous, right? I don't know, but it's gorgeous. So I want to get a lamp, like a battery battery operated lamp, because obviously to have a lamp that connects to the, there's too much. No, we need it for the blenders, right? And also, I want to pot or plant my herbs, right? Because my herbs don't last that long. So I want to get um, either rosemary, probably rose, rosemary, because it's a little bit more sturdy than basil. So that um herb will go over here i'll plant, i'll keep that over here so i can just reach for it whenever i need it and then i do have my different cutting boards you know you need different cutting boards for different things if you don't know now you know Biggie said it. i got one for meat i got one for veggies and i got one for fruits right the one i got for the fruit the small one i just use for the juice it's not i got from herb down for this it's you know it was cheap it gets a job done it's very light but i want a real sturdy one like a real nice sturdy mango wood or teak wood like something hefty like i'm here you know i do this kind of cutting board a nice round one too and something small because i already have two big ones and they're heavy as heck anthropology has some good ones hold on guys this is so good and the ginger is strong if you don't like ginger obviously don't go ham on it like we i did but it's strong. And I got this recipe from Ikea. We went to Ikea a couple years ago and we bought a drink from them. Three ingredients, apple, pear, and ginger. And I'm like, I came home and we created it. And I've been making it since. Anywho, obviously these things take time. And the thing about decorating is, 
don't don't feel like you have to get everything at once take your time search find what you love and then purchase it. and if it's too much save up and get it and that's my plan like actually you guys are going to go on you know go on this journey with me with spicing up the countertops you know and the kitchen whatever the case may be um so you will see as the process go i got a really nice bread bowl from target that is already here which i love and another thing i do want to is a nice serving no a mixing bowl a new one because the one i have is great but it's broken it's wood it's gorgeous i got it from um home goods years ago and it's just oh so good but you can't put anything in there it leaks um but i love it so much i still kept it and do like dry seasoning in them to the cabinet it's a little janky that's all right sometimes you just gotta work with what you got all right anywho as you can see yeah it's nicely organized right and it's cute but all of this it's just it's just a lot there's too many packages different colors it's not it's not uniform so i'm gonna get um glass jars to put this in um just so it's there's some type of cohesive cohesiveness going right i like these mason jars the ball one these are great brown rice goes in here because my husband loves the brown rice but my problem with the those jars is the tin it rusts so much and it's sometimes it gets really gross and it's annoying so i want to try the um wet um glass jar from cb2 no not cb2 crane buyer sorry and i want to try um the la parfait from the french jars because they don't have that you don't have to worry about it rusting anything like that so that will go here where i put all the nuts in there peanuts we have peanut um uh, pistachios almond um and you know so flexi so i'll put that in there and this will stay the same it's just baby formula for if we need it couscous maybe i'll put the couscous in the glass jar as well and plus honestly guys glass jars are better than plastic because plastic is trash one two glass can't keep your food fresh right longer than plastic will so if you can transfer everything to glass if possible listen we break glass in my house every day so drinking glasses or mason jars it is a common thing to be buying in our house because we're always breaking it um but yeah so that will go there so on this side we're not gonna do that much that many changes i do want to get a new knife set this one is great but i like the it's close better we talked about this before but i do want to get a new knife set but that's not urgent it's not pressing so patience is a feature so in here like i was saying this is all my spices and seasoning items and as you can see it's just plenty right because i like a well seasoned food if you only have salt and pepper in your cabinet you need to watch the food network it might help you out okay but as you can see, so first of all, it's different materials. You got glass, you got plastic, you got tall, short, medium. It just, it's a lot, right? It's a lot going on. So the plan is to get um, nice, cute jars and put all my season seasoning in there and probably get a label maker and just label all of them so you know which, are, which one you're grabbing. But um, that is the plan. Like, obviously mrs dash we get the jumbo size from costco um it would need a bigger, bigger job but if it's going to be different sizes at least it is all the all the glass they're all glass and i will um obviously organize it by size but that is a plan to get jars for all these and if you watch my last video you should know what this is okay i used on x this morning that's a very good and my avocado sauce that was also, also very good so that's one, another thing that i want to change and the last thing i do want to change um is the paper towel holder we don't like it we don't like how it look it just do what it's supposed to do as it should we want to get a pretty a prettier one so i'll be looking at cb2 or grand barrel to see what they have or even west, west elm and see what they have and um get that so yeah, those are the changes I'm going to make it for now. Yeah, we are not doing this.
just like decluttering your space we also have to declutter our mind this is before the pandemic i went on a social media fast on january 1st right and honestly it's probably the best decision i ever made and it took me a while for, for me to ever do the social media break because i didn't think i was capable of doing it because low-key i was addicted to instagram and honestly it was just one day when i said okay i'm gonna start on the first i signed out of everything and deleted the app and yo it came so easy it's so funny how at first you believe that it's going to be so difficult you cannot do it but the minute i signed out of everything it became such an easy thing i forgot all about it i still was active on youtube in terms of like you know watching videos because i watch a lot of my sermons on youtube and then co obviously when covid happened the whole world stopped and i was definitely watching all my sermons on youtube so i was very heavy on youtube it was such a mental declutter i wasn't hearing everybody and their mama's opinions i wasn't seeing the posts of people talking about they losing family members or friends to covid granted i lost family a family member to covid i have there were some people in my family that caught COVID that it was really high risk. We were very afraid that they were not going to make it. I remember I was on a prayer line and people were just talking about how stressed they are about, you know, seeing everybody losing their family member to COVID and how stressful and scary it was. And I, I remember just being so passionate about this. I was like, get off Instagram. Get off, get off of these social medias. It's like, you're getting news all day, every day. You're getting updates about people's lives all day, every day. It is so much. Like, it doesn't, you don't even allow your brain to just think. You don't even allow your mind to just breathe and just be by itself because you are bombarded with everybody else's opinion, bombarded with everybody else's updates about life, bombarded with everything, everything and anything. Now, I know doing COVID is probably crazy on Instagram. Then my, between the news posting, people posting everybody's stuck at home so i'm sure people were on instagram like crazy all hours of the day just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling so you're seeing everything everybody's talking and i know that was stressful like covid time was already stressful but i think being on social media was another added stress and i'm so glad i was not on social media during covid everything felt normal again it took it back to how things used to be that it, it eliminated that wanting or that urge to compare yourself to people because i mean you could sit there and be like oh i don't compare myself to anybody so consciously we do period we do we are humans that's just what we do and it's not necessarily it doesn't have to be envious it doesn't have to be jealousy but we compare ourselves oh this person got them hmm. well maybe i should get the other. we do it that's just what we do you know but because you're not scrolling and seeing the highlights of people's lives you don't compare yourself to to, the, to those people. You don't compare yourself to anybody because you, it's you. You have nobody to compare yourself to, okay? You might look at somebody down the street as you're walking and compare yourself to them. That's whatever. But it's not as much as you get when you're on social media. So it eliminated that, and I love that. Um, and even coming back now, one thing I noticed that it started, that whole comparison started again. I was just like, oh, I hate this part about social media. You know, I don't like it. Another thing too that I realized that I do more often now than before, before the break was, I don't, I don't be on, I don't be on Instagram for endless amount of hours like I used to. Like I go on, I post what I want to post, I have whatever conversations I want to have, and I'm done. When I leave, I leave, and I choose to come back when I feel like coming back. Another thing that it showed me or taught me was like to live in the moment. Like now I'm so, I'm oh, I remember when all my friends were on instagram still and we would go out to eat and literally as soon as the food come out everybody had their phone out every single person would have their phone out to take a picture and i used to be sitting there looking at them like what the hell are y'all doing then i'm like oh my gosh i used to do the same thing this is how i look it just looked crazy i see why older people like you know in the in the ones in the 50s and 60s we don't have a social media be looking at us like we're crazy because it it looks so ridiculous when you have a bunch of, like five cameras going like this trying to take pictures it looks so ridiculous like sitting sitting um on the outside looking in it's just like wow we look stupid as hell we look dumb we look dumb as hell doing this in the public areas um it's not even like a picture you're taking to sell to Vogue or the Food Network magazine. No, this is just for Instagram, and it just looks so ridiculous. And I used to be sitting there with my, my fork and knife, like, all right, are y'all done? Because I want to eat. Oh, no, let's do a boomerang. I want to eat. Forget the boom boom. I don't care about no boomerang. I want to eat, okay? But anyway, that was a side story. But it did teach me to live in the moment. Like, 
when I go to plays now, when I go to um, any type of shows or whatever, I actually enjoy the show. I don't have my phone out. I'm not recording anything. I let my eyes record what's happening. I let my memory record what's happening and I replay it in my head, okay? Um, yeah, from time to time, I'll probably get a picture at the end or in the beginning or whatever the case may be. But once I get those pictures, because yes, pictures are from memories, but once I get those pictures, um, phone is down now and I'm enjoying what I came to enjoy, okay? Um, so it's just, I encourage everyone, if you can, even if you can't do two years, try five months, try six months. And I'm telling you, don't say that, oh, I can never do that. Let me tell you something. I didn't think I was capable of even doing a day, okay? Because I was addicted. But after one year passed, and I was like, all right, give myself a year, you could go back. I was like, nah, I actually like this. I don't want to go back. I actually, damn, I was so upset when I had to come back. And I know no, no one has a gun to my head said so you had to come back. But for 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 reasons of, you know, pushing my channel and um, pushing it forward and for what I want to do in the future, I needed the social media. But, man, if it was up to me and I did not need it, baby, sis was not going back. And honestly, when you leave, you're not missing anything. You're not. If it's a world crisis, you're going to find it. Go on YouTube. You're going to catch it on YouTube. Or eventually it's going to come out. All right? But you're not missing anything. So I I encourage. Oh, and another thing too, when I was on, off on social media, man, I spent so much time with God. I was always reading my word. I was listening to sermons. Like, I was... The thing that I used to fiend to be on Instagram, I would fiend to read my word. I would, I would fiend to read the Bible. Like, I'm like, oh, oh I gotta go, I gotta go. It's nine o'clock. I, I, I gotta go home. I can't hang out anymore. I can, or, or, oh, it's nine o'clock. I, I, I gotta put. Like, there was no thing of like, oh, let me go on social media. I'm, let me go on Instagram for like five minutes. And, no, it was just I need to read my Bible. Like, it's nine o'clock. This is my Bible time. I gotta see what happened to Sarah. Like, I. What's up? I gotta read my Bible. Like I was fiending. Whereas when I was on Instagram, God is in my head. Like, yo, you should read. And I'm just like, all right, all right. Let me just, let me just, let me just scroll a couple more pictures. And next thing you know, it's an hour later. And now you're tired. Now you're going to bed. You know, so and you missed out on the whole reading. So it did that as well. But I would encourage and everyone, every single person. Take a break from social media. Take a break from Instagram. Whichever is your vice, Instagram, um, TikTok, whatever. Whichever is your thing, take a break from it. I'm, I remember my sister-in-law, she was she she was always on Facebook, always on um, TikTok, like, just always. And God was telling her to basically take a break from it because you you, there's a lot of stuff you're not getting done. And she came off um, Facebook and she she loves it. She, she, I remember she was like, I get so much done now. So much school work done, just so much done. You'd be very surprised how much you could get done when you just stay off social media. Cause you know what? That scrolling, you don't think it'd take that much time. But you'll be scrolling. Oh a little ten minutes, ten minutes turns to twenty minutes, twenty minutes turns to thirty. Next you know it's two hours later and you're still scrolling, your thumb hurt. And that's why I knew I had an issue with Instagram because my thumb used to hurt to a point my husband had to massage my thumb because all this scrolling. I'm like, yo, this is just ridiculous. So my challenge to you is start off with, if you can't even do six months, start off with one week. And if you see yourself able to do one week, do two weeks. And if you're able to do that, do three and just keep going. And then try a month, try two, try try six, try a year, two years. All right, at least the, the goal is to try two years. It's possible, I did it. Somebody that was addicted to Instagram is very possible. So, yeah, I hope you guys. Um, and if you are going to take that challenge, please comment below because I would love to. See, I would love to encourage you. I would love to. I would love to give you some pointers of how I survived it. But I promise you, the minute after a couple weeks, you get you forget about Instagram. Just start living your life normally. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you do take that challenge, please. I would love to know. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I hope you go and watch the other videos that I posted. Um, yeah. Um, if you have any recipes that you like to share, please share with me. I'm down for learning new food, new recipes from all cultures. Trust me, because I get bored with 
eating the same thing. I get bored with, you know some people can eat the same food for like five days straight. I can't do that. Two, two days, three days max, I'm done. But so I always tell myself since I was younger, I'm just like, I'm not gonna eat Ghanaian food for the rest of my life every day. I need to learn Italian, learn Moroccan, learn Ghanaian, learn uh, Nigerian, whatever, okay? Cause I need to have a kitchen that is vibrant, okay? That have multiple cultures in there. So um, if you have any recipes, please do not hesitate to share cause I would like to know, okay? I might try it on the channel. So yeah, um, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Uh, no, no, no. No. Oh.